So here I am editing an awesome thing called a loop component in both OneNote and the loop app itself. So these things can be edited in multiple places as long as you're in the same organization. So I'm going to be comparing this video, the loop application itself to OneNote, which has been around since 2003, because a lot of people are saying that loop app is going to replace OneNote. I'm gonna show you the things I love about both. My name is Dave and I've done tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, but also random other applications like Canva or Loop or OneNote. And I love talking about the new stuff and this just got released, Loop. So let's get started. So on the left, I have Microsoft Loop and on the right, I have OneNote. As you can see, they can even have the same object. So this is called a Loop component. So as I edit one, it edits it in the other one. This is really, really awesome. This is a thing that got released with Loop that can exist in Microsoft Loop, but also in OneNote or in Word online or in Microsoft Whiteboard or in Teams or in Outlook emails as well. So these are absolutely awesome. And you can create them in either OneNote or Loop. So for example, here in Loop on the left, I can press tab and I can write, for example, a bullet list. And I can say item more here. And then if I select these, I can create loop component. And this loop component can then be moved elsewhere. If I copy component, I can go back in here. And anywhere in OneNote, I can paste. And eventually will show up. Now, at the moment, at the time of making this video, these loop components are available in OneNote only if you're in the insider version on desktop, but in OneNote online everywhere. So I'm going to talk about it as if it was available in all of OneNote because it will be soon. But even if you don't have it on desktop now, you can get it on online. As you can see, I can edit it on one and then the other. Loop components are awesome. In the insert tab, you have loop components here and you can get a list of things here. I do note that the list is slightly different. So these are the ones for on loop that you can make. You have stuff like voting tables, progress trackers, but these are just kind of fancy versions of other things that exist that you can have in loop and in OneNote. So loop components, I think, are really going to revolutionize the workplace in general. But at the moment, they're still being developed. You can exist them as tables, and as tables, you can even switch the view to a board view which is a little bit like Microsoft Planner, if you like, where you can move something between each thing and then switch it back to a table. You can also export to Excel, but it won't stay live in Excel, which is a shame. Hopefully that will come soon. You can hide columns and you can filter if you need to as well. Equally here, you have the same thing, so I can filter. It is quite long-winded how to filter, I think. So winner is, and then you would say one of them. It's a lot of clicks to filter compared to what you do in Excel. Note that it filters here and that flows through to the other side. Yeah, if you use this, you can look up the shared locations and you can copy the location like I showed you into other things like Outlook emails or Teams things as well and see who has access to them. They, do, they also do save on your personal OneDrive rather than on SharePoint. And if you create it in OneNote, it will save in a OneNote place. If you create it in Whiteboard, it will save in a Whiteboard folder that's created in your OneDrive. Not ideal, to be honest. It would be nice if it was more in SharePoint or matching where the underlying document is saved. But that's how that is for now. But for the most part of this video, I'm going to compare Loop and OneNote. And I'm going to compare the Loop app rather than Loop components, which can feature in both. Here I have loop the navigation and you have here something that's called workspaces that you can navigate between and underneath each workspace you have different pages and underneath each page you can have a sub page or a sub sub page and keep going with new sub page underneath them and you can do all of this kind of stuff there you can also share an entire page as a loop component whereas with the one note you have a very very similar navigation with one note you have something called notebooks so these are my notebooks underneath here. And underneath each notebook, you have sections. And then underneath each section, you have pages. You also have section groups and sub pages as well. So you have up to five levels, whereas it seems to be unlimited how many levels you can have in Loop. But essentially, it doesn't really matter that much because you have as much as you would need to, I guess. So I'm going to create a new page here. And also I'm going to create a new page 
in loop. But then what I love about OneNote is you can really type anywhere on the page into these things called containers, and then you can drag them around as you want to. You can even hold down shift and then merge them as well. I really, really love that. Whereas with loop, you can just kind of write things and it needs to be progressing as you go along. It can't just be anywhere in the page. It's a little bit like word in that regard, but I think that it's much better if you can type anywhere on the page. The other thing you'll notice from the interface is that there is no ribbon in loop. So loop just has this up here and the way to do things is from this typing in that character as you say or type in at to find which i think is not that intuitive personally you can add all of these things a lot of which you would find in the insert tab in onenote but in onenote you have the ribbon that all of us microsoft office users are very very used to the loop application is inspired by a non-microsoft application called notion which uses a lot of this same lingo and also is a little bit more visual with icons and things like that rather than OneNote. OneNote is something that has been around within Microsoft since 2003 but I think that there are lots and lots of benefits that OneNote has that Loop doesn't. So here we are back in this and I'm going to actually add a column. So I'm going to click on here and insert column to the right and I'm going to say this is going to be done and I'm going to say yes, where they are done. So these three are done. All right, so searching, OneNote does this so much better. So if you search for OneNote, for example, it will search all the text in the titles and also anywhere on the page and you can click to go directly to it. It will even search for text that is in pictures, which is really, really awesome. And it will also search for text that's in an audio, which is great. But the fact they can search for anything anywhere on the page is awesome. The search that's in loop is pretty awful. So here I've got sunset. So this is the name of sunset. It's a thing, but if I search sunset, it will tell me I have to search on being or on office.com, which is so stupid. It should know that that is going to be part of the word. So that is a really, really big limitation. And for me, searching is so, so important in my notes, that that is a huge, huge limitation. Templates are definitely better in loop. So if I was to add a new page, then it immediately gives me some templates and I can go to the template gallery and see loads of these. Uh, personally, there are more and nicer and more modern ones, but would I actually use them? I'm not sure that I would. I'm not really a template use kind of guy, apart from for graphic design. Uh, OneNote does have some templates in the insert tab and page templates. I would say that they are pretty out of trend and kind of education based a lot of them but there are some business ones so meeting notes usually and it will look like that so it's a little bit not very modern uh, with these tags and things it doesn't really react to anywhere whereas the loop ones does create these sort of loop components that can be shared in elsewhere so i'd say loop wins on that but for me it's not really that important the templates links to files so with loop you can actually at any point you can type in this slash and include certain aspects as we saw. You can also type in at and search for files. So I can say like some Excel document like that and it will create a link for it like that. So it's easy to create that link. And the other thing that you can do is you can also create a link like this one. So that's actually the same file. If I go to plus, I can choose a new link and it will allow me to paste in the URL. You do have to paste in the URL. You can't search for it in this context. But once you paste in, it'll put it there inside your workspace. OneNote, you can't have a non OneNote file in this list, but you can kind of include lists and things quite easily. If you go to the insert and files, you can insert a file attachment and then that will be similar to this. Or you can also do this thing called a file printout. And a file printout will be the actual file. So here I inserted a PowerPoint called loop stuff. And it actually shows me all of the slides that are inside my PowerPoint, which is really awesome. It is static. It won't necessarily update. But it's really good if you want to kind of annotate it and think of it as you go along. So it is kind of nice like that. Both of them can embed videos from YouTube. So that is pretty useful as well. 
OneNote can take loads of different types of recordings. So for example, you can record your voice, can even transcribe your voice. You can even upload an audio file you've already taken and OneNote can transcribe it. I won't show right now, I have another video about that. You can also record a video. And of course you can type in or use drawings like this as well. So with Loop, you can record a video as well. You can also obviously type and do all the things that we see in here. But this list is constantly changing. By the way, to format things in Loop, the way to do it is to select it and do the pop-up like that. There is a limited thing that you can do with it. You can make things headers and that can lead to a table of contents, change the colors like this, change it to quote, indent, and yeah, then create a loop component from anything that you have like that. So yeah, it is a little bit more limited what you can do than with your full text editor with OneNote that is basically similar to what you get with Word. So yeah, I think the OneNote definitely wins for that. Tags, so tags are a way that you can in OneNote, you can type in a list of items like that here. And then you can select your text and you can go here and give it some tags. You can give it a to-do tag and then check it off that list. Or you can also give it another type of tag, like something like that. Or you can even make it an Outlook task. And if it's an Outlook task, then it syncs to your Microsoft Outlook. It also syncs to your Microsoft To-Do. So that is kind of nice. but Loop definitely does have the upper hand with these things in the sense that you can create a loop component which has more tasks or more other things like that as well. So if you insert a loop component and you can choose a checklist, get new phone, install apps, call mum, buy cover, things like that. And then you can cross them off as you go along and since this is a loop component, you can copy it and paste it back into anywhere in loop. This is a bit cheating because I would say that loop does definitely have more of these, but you can insert a loop component in any of these apps. So it's not really fair to say that this doesn't exist in OneNote, even though it's the loop technology that does it. You can also comment about these things, so, uh, and give it an emoji as well and boost it. These are, this is an aspect of loop components. I personally find the loop components are really, really useful, but the loop app, I don't see myself using, especially for note taking. Having said that is definitely better for sharing. So OneNote, you can only share at the notebook level, which is really, really the high level of everything. You can't share individually as a page or as a thing, unless you share as this loop component, as I keep saying. However, with Microsoft Loop, you have a lot more sharing. You can share the entire page as a loop component. You can share just access to this page. You can share your workspace, or you can share individual bits within it, which are the loop components. So there's a lot more when it comes to sharing in Loop than there is in OneNote. But for me, when I think of OneNote, I think of a physical notebook. I would never share that with anyone. That's always for me. So. Yeah, I'm totally okay with that. Meeting notes. So one of the things I love doing with OneNote is if you press a plus, you can go to the home tab and you have meeting details and it will look through your calendar about different meetings that you have that day. I haven't got much today, but let's do yesterday. And there you go, I have a billing meeting and it shows key information. If there was a message, who is going to that? And then you can write your notes here which is really good. You could also use one of the meeting notes templates in the insert templates tab. Now, if you are in Microsoft Teams, this is pretty cool. So this is a Teams meeting where the meeting notes are automatically a loop item. So like this, you can have your agenda and then you have your meeting notes as bullet points here and then you have your follow-up task table as well. So this is pretty nice. And what you can do is you can also open this in loop. So after you've done this, you can sort of see the shared location. So once you click on that, you can add to a new loop workspace. And now there you go. Now it's added to your loop workspace. You can choose which one you want to do. So I can do this OneNote versus loop. And here I am in OneNote versus loop. And here it is the one that I added, the meeting agenda. So you can add that. Note that I am in loop on the browser here rather than on the app. 
I'll show you how to get all of those, how to open up Loop in OneNote in, at the end of this video. Into some other things. So if I were to take a screenshot of this, and then if I was to paste it there, I can right click and I can choose copy text from picture and I can paste. And it will give me the text. It's tried to make these into bullet points. It doesn't quite do that perfectly. And this it doesn't know what to do with track through, but it does a decent job. You can also do with OneNote, you can also do math. So you can also do 97 plus whatever number that is equals enter. And it will give you that quick arithmetic you Can do 78 multiplied by that equals. And if you do X for times that works as well. So it can be a really good way to get some quick maths out there. With loop, some of the cool things that you can do that I haven't covered yet are, if you press that, you can choose something like a table of contents and you can do a Kanban board as well, which is a brand new thing that just got released. And you can drag things from one thing into the other one. You can add details and you can expand this or look at the card options and view details, and then it will show you more things that you can edit. In my experience, this crashes it for you, so I'm gonna have to close it and come back for this video. <laughs> the last thing that I love doing with OneNote is in the View tab, you can go to Dock to Desktop. This is really, really great, because it will always put this as a sidebar, allowing you to expand whatever else you want right until there. And yeah, and it's great to have as a sidebar as you work, as you're doing different things, as you're going through it. I really love that. And it will even detect if you have an app like Word or PowerPoint open and link it to that document. So here, for example, I have a PowerPoint file open. And if I start typing, it knows that I'm in this PowerPoint document called loop stuff. And therefore, if I were to even close this, save and close, if I double click on there, it will tell me that it's going to reopen that document. So that's really, really cool. It takes you directly to the sheet you were talking about. How do you open these? I'm going to go back to my full screen view. So in the view tab, you can go to just the normal view, or you could have also done that as well to take you there. So OneNote comes pre-installed with your Microsoft Office, so you should be able to open it just from your start menu. You do have to install the Loop Windows application if you want that from the Microsoft Store. So if you're in the Microsoft Store, you can search for Loop, and then it can give you Microsoft Loop and you can install that. And if you want to get to it from a web browser, you can click on this waffle icon and then you have Loop or OneNote. You can get to them from that. And if you don't see insert Loop components in your OneNote desktop, you can get to the Loop components from OneNote Online at the moment, which is great. Here is Loop as well. Awesome. Well, there is a whistle stop tour on Loop versus OneNote because some people are saying that Loop is replacing OneNote. I personally disagree and I will continue to use OneNote because of a lot of the awesome stuff that I've shown you in this video. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, give this video a like. Thanks for watching.